particular case uh, where you have a man who was accused and indicted for the murder of his own wife and son. Uh, the motive might be the most important fact that any jury would want to know. For them to really understand what the motive is in this particular case, they're going to have to understand that there was a huge difference between who Alec Murdoch professed to be to the outside world and who he really was, but also how that allowed him to avoid accountability for defrauding victims of almost $9 million since 2011. This is a white collar case that culminated with two murders. We are just 20 days away from the start of the trial. Uh, South Carolina versus Alec Murdoch down in the low country. Um, accused of murdering his wife and his son. And there you heard the prosecutor talking about the motive. That he was engaging in all this fraud and needed a diversion because it was about to hit the fan, folks. It was about to hit the fan. And the theory of prosecutors is that he murders his wife and his son so he looks like the victim of a crime. Like, oh my goodness, poor Alec, let's not worry about the money that he stole from the law firm or that he stole from his clients. No, 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 no. His wife and his son were just murdered. He's a victim. That's gonna be their theory at trial. Here's the response to that by the defense, by Alec Murdoch's defense team. Uh, this is from their motion papers. The states claim that Murdoch murdered his wife and son to divert attention from his alleged financial misdeeds and garner sympathy from members of his law firm to buy additional time before his misconduct was discovered is illogical and implausible. This motive theory is simply created out of whole cloth. There is zero evidentiary support for this motive and it is nothing more than a transparent effort to improperly persuade the jury that Murdoch is a person of such bad character that he can commit the most heinous crime imaginable. Therefore, the prior bad act evidence does not fall within one of the permissible exceptions to Rule 404B's preclusion of the state's use of prior bad, bad acts as propensity evidence. The defense doesn't want the jury to know that this guy was stealing from everybody. They don't want it. But prosecutors say, well, that's, it's connected to the case. It's the reason why he committed the murder. So should they or shouldn't they hear this evidence? Let's bring back in our think tank, Renee Hill, Brian Weiss, Rick King with us. Renee, I know you love 404B stuff. That's like, you just love that evidence. <laughs> Gives the jury a much clearer picture of who, of who the defendant is. Yes, but you know what, Vinny? You want the jury to judge the case on the facts that are before them, the facts about the crime that the defendant is charged with. And you don't want the defendant to be prejudiced by outside information that is not relevant to the crime at hand. But what so if it's the motive? It's the motive. Made. Is well, it as a all, connection? The prosecution is going to have to connect that to really show that this is motive, that that crime, uh, you know, goes to the motive that they are trying to promote here before the jury. But, you know, prejudice is prejudice. And the judge is going to have to make a ruling that is fair and impartial to the defendant to make sure that he gets a fair trial. Yeah, I, he'll get a fair trial. Murdoch's always get fair trials down in South Carolina. <laughs> I don't think they've ever been brought to trial before, Brian. This might be a first. Um, but this, what do you think? Do you think prosecutors are truly, truly believe this is the motive, or do you think they're trying to be sneaky, like the like the defense is claiming? You know, I'm going to put on my special prosecutor hat, even though I haven't been paid since the summer of '42. Look, they're going to kick me out of the Golden Agers Club at the ACLU, but Vinny, I think this evidence comes in. And I think it comes in, first of all, because the standard of admissibility is so minimal. Abuse of discretion. The penitentiaries are full of defendants convicted based on rulings, based on whether a judge abused his or her discretion. And in this situation, this prosecutor will argue, in my estimation successfully, take the over, that motive is an exception to 404B, because crimes, particularly crimes like this, don't happen in a vacuum. And the jury is entitled to see the before, during, and after. And even though motive's not an element of the offense, believe me, this is going to be a case where you want to bet the house on this evidence 
coming in is one of the 404B exceptions. Then. Rick King, this to me, this is so important. And I think the prosecutor was right that the jury, this is going to be the most important thing for the jury. I mean, why would you? I mean, he shot his son in the face. He was unrecognizable. Unrecognizable. Like Executed his wife. Two different guns. Two different guns. But the, the, I think the jury's entitled to understand why he might want to do this. I mean, from the prosecutor's perspective, they, they want to give a motive. They want to give a why did this happen to the jury. Isn't that the but way we should look at the world, though, through from the prosecutor's perspective? I mean... <laughs> You'd like it that way, I'm sure. <laughs> but there's, there's that cloak that we talked about. Remember that cloak we talked about, that presumption of innocence? And I knew I sure. shouldn't have said that, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> and we want to make sure that we're presenting the evidence that's also fair to the defendant and to bring in... and, and I. And I while I, I believe that there's a good possibility that this is coming in, um, I think that in, in an effort to try to give the defendant his, you know, his the, the fairness that he's entitled to and the presumption and, and maintaining that presumption of innocence, it needs to be scrutinized heavily to make sure that we are not treading upon the rights that he definitely deserves. All right. Don't go anywhere, folks.